people who are in powerful positions, right? I think their ego sort of gets inflated and that's affected by the people around them because the people around them are trying to continue steering the ship in this sort of power direction. And I think things that they say and do will sort of inflate the ego of the person who's in the power position, right? And they're going to make that person feel somewhat godlike. So whether or not the power that is being gained is having a positive or negative effect on the community as, as a whole, I think that that sort of gets um, blinded by this addiction that begins, begins to form uh, of, of wanting more and more power, right? Because if you have, if, let's say that you're in a, you know, a huge building, top floor building, New York, every time someone comes into your office, they're just sucking your dick. Right, they're there to just suck your dick the whole time. So you think that you are this, or your or your clit, suck your clit, guy. You gotta, yeah. you gotta, I mean, if you're if you're a power woman, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just think that um, people just get more and more power hungry because of the immediate um, dopamine responses that they're getting day to day from people adoring them and honoring them. Right. Yeah, I, I think that definitely. Um, it plays a plays a role, um, and for for different people, different situations, it'll be you know more or less um, of an influence, right? The other th the other thing with it is power in and of itself can be quite addictive, just because it allows you to do more and get more. But um, I, I I feel like if we go deeper and deeper and deeper into it, we sort of get to this point where it's like there has to be a level of I'm going to say ignorance where like you have to be sufficiently ignorant to want to gain more and more and more power, I think, because, you know, you try to like understand, yeah, like develop a deeper understanding of life and the universe and all the rest of it. Um, you sort of realize it's like, you, you don't really know if something you're doing is good or bad in the moment you only time will sort of tell and then like the way you choose to look at it will define whether it was good or bad and so you could do these things that you're thinking are really good and you can be like going a hundred percent into that but then there could be all these unintended consequences um you know like that could end up being really bad and then it could be harsh and sad and the rest of it whereas like i think you have to be kind of ignorant in that regard to like you know have blinders on and just really go for something um like, and, and I think that's what is part of that allure for power. Like the more you sort of think about it, the more you realize like, oh shit, there's no way of really knowing, um, you know, the good or the bad in the moment. Um, but I, yeah, I don't, it's a very complicated topic. <laughs> um, and so I, I do have some brief, like, uh, overview stuff that we can sort of, um, chat on. Okay. So like, there's, uh, we can break it down into like a couple of different factors, right? So we've got psychological factors, um, so socio-cultural factors, biological factors, philosophical and ex existential factors, um, econ and economic factors, right? So in different contexts, right? Like it, these, these will have different roles, but they all sort of, um, they're all sort of in the same space overlapping and um composing together if that kind of makes sense so um yeah like what is it that like what it, i can understand the allure of power but what is it about a person that separates them from wanting you know just some power to immense amounts of power right guys i think it's safe to say that for your average person they don't really want huge amounts of power like they just want enough power to have some autonomy in their life and, um, I think that, yeah, like yeah, some autonomy in their life and then enjoy the little things, so to speak, you know, like your average, the average person is, well, has been quite content just, you know, like finding a partner, um, procreating, having children, um, and having a good life, you know, like, I think that's, this that's like, you know, your middle class, so to speak, um, yeah, like that's what, you know, the American dream and all those different things, like they're all built off that kind of thing. It's like, you know, have a, have a, have a nice a nice place to live, have food on the table and be able to have some quality time with your family um, and, and, and raise your children in a relatively safe environment, right? Like I feel like for most people, that's enough. 
And that's not a huge amount of power, is it? Whereas you have these outliers of people who, who seek to gain massive amounts of power. And I just, I want to understand like, what is it about those people? What is different about those people that leads to them wanting to do that? And I don't know if it's good or bad. Like, again, like we don't, we don't really know. Um, is it useful? Like, I think, yeah, in certain cases you need people like, you know, arguably Elon Musk has a fair bit of power, right? Um, and he seems to be using that power to do, you know, relatively useful things in my opinion. Um, will there be, um, unintended negative consequences? Yes. You know, so like he's building, um, Tesla electric cars, they have, you know, autonomous abilities, um, in the, in the development of those autonomous vehicles, um, and the training it goes into that people have died you know like the the the, mis the computers have made mistakes um but in training the ability to autonomously drive with machine learning and the rest of it will we lead to having fewer road deaths yeah you know, possibly right so then you got to get into this philosophical debate of like oh okay are the uh, you know is those people dying in the process of training worth it for the long term uh, outcome of less people dying on the roads, right? And these are all really hard things to untangle. So we're not going to jump into that today, but like, I'm just trying to like set the stage a little bit with it. So, uh, if, if all of that sort of makes a bit of sense, uh, we'll go into this. So, um, psychological factors, right? So some individuals may have a heightened need for control over their environment and other people. This could be driven by underlying fears, insecurities, or past experience where they felt powerless. Um, another aspect of the psychological uh, factors is um, narcissistic traits. So a sense of entitlement, a need for constant admiration and a lack of empathy um, or compassion, I would say, um, could drive someone to seek power and wealth as a way to validate their own self-worth, right? So um, one thing, there's a good book by uh, Robert Greene, which is The 48 Laws of Power. Um, really fascinating book. But um, with, within that, you sort of Well, these got the 48 laws of power and then the laws of human nature, right? And if you read both of those books, you can gain a, a, some interesting insights into uh, human nature and the laws of power. <laughs> um, but like the narcissistic stuff is interesting. So you, if you look on, uh, you know, social media, you will you know, typically find people that are, you know, present with these narcissistic traits where what they're really doing is they're relying on other people's um, opinions and feedback to validate themselves, right? So they're relying on external things to validate themselves. And um, arguably that's because intrinsically they aren't able to do it for themselves, right? So they don't know how to do that for themselves. So they rely on all these other people to do it for them. Yeah. And so they end up doing behaviors that play to people so they can get those people to do the validation for them. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, it does. As, as you were saying that, I was thinking, what types of people do you find go for that narcissistic type of power? Um, you know, who would fall into the narcissistic category, right? And, and you're right, it, it could be people on, on social media platforms that... Well, a business, um, business, um, government... <laughs> Uh, like law, like any, any position where that you can gain power from being in that structure. Um, and it's like, you look at it and just think about it in terms of games people play, right? So like, if you're playing a game where you're trying to impress a bunch of other people, um, not necessarily because it's something you truly want to be doing, but because you need, by impressing those people, it validates you. Right. Right. But there's another way of doing that, which is like, oh, I really love law or whatever. Um, and I, I think that things could be done, like I've studied the history of it and I can see where things have gone wrong previously. And I think that there can be slight tweaks can be made that will make this system, you know, um, more useful for more people kind of thing or more productive. And you do it for that reason. You don't really care what other people think about you. That's a different motivator, different driver, but doing the same kind of job. And I think the outcomes are different too. Whereas what ends up happening is it's like, oh, um, there's this group of people, I really want them to like me. So I'm going to play to that. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree. And what you said is really interesting because I feel like if we had a political leader who sort of gave up something 
to show people that he's in it for the right reasons. Um, I don't know what that thing could be, but in, in a sense, show people that they're not in it for, you know, for X, Y, Z, that they're actually in it to sort of make a positive change. Okay. For example, let, let's take um, Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk so suddenly, actually, it's a bad example, but anyways, Elon Musk suddenly steps down from his SpaceX position, his Tesla position to become a politician, right? So he's giving away all of this power and money that he's generated because he now wants to do something to sort of, because he believes in himself and he believes that he can make a much larger positive change than the current politicians can, right? So he's giving up this big position of power to sort of do this pr selfless pursuit. And I feel like if a politician was able to, to do that, um, people would be more, a lot more likely to follow them and it would show that they're not just some power hungry or money hungry uh, person because they've given that up. Yeah. So, um, I think that the, the people that should be in positions of power, um, should be exemplars, right? Like they should be exemplars of what it means to live like a, a, a purposeful, meaningful life, you know? Um, you know, the people that are in positions in public health should be exemplars of health, <laughs> you know, like they should, they should, um, you know, be obsessed in some degree or to some degree, sorry, um, with health and living, a, a, a healthful lifestyle and understanding what that means, you know, and you can look at people who are in positions of power within public health and realize that they're really not. <laughs> And it just shows, you know, like you can get to these positions without having that as your thing. Um, and I think part of that is because, um, they see they're like, oh, if I get this position, then people will respect me. People I'll be in this position of power. I'll get all this sort of stuff. And that's like, they, they're sort of trying to cheat the system, if that makes sense, which is like what you were saying, you know, like, um, they want to be healthy, but like, they got to do really unhealthy things to then get money so that then when they got money, they can become healthy. If that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. so I think it's a similar kind of thing. It's a, it's a difficult topic, but yes. Um, so the narcissistic stuff, I think it's like, I think you see it lots in society whenever you're sort of relying on, you know, um, other people to define your self-worth and validate you. Um, I think that hints at narcissism. 